before we get into the dressing recipe, there's two things that are very important that you need to know. So I do have a video on my YouTube channel about how to make the cornbread. However, it is a smaller portion. So if you are gonna make the dressing, I encourage you to go visit my blog. You can find it linked below or you can just Google Nisha loves it blog and it'll pop up and follow the directions over there because the recipe is doubled. Now you can triple it, quadruple it, Either way it works, I actually quadrupled it for when I'm cooking it, but uh, the written recipe is for doubled, which will serve four to six respectively, depending on who you live with, because some people eat a lot more. So double it, quadruple it, do whatever you need to fit your needs and feel free to play around with it, make it yours. Also, when you make the cornbread, make sure to put your skillet in the oven while it's preheating. That way the skillet is nice and hot when you pour the batter in. That just makes for a really nice crust on the edges of the cornbread. All right guys, that's it. Let's get into the recipe. Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna be making my grandmother's keto-fied cornbread dressing recipe. Now I feel like it goes without saying, but apparently it doesn't. This recipe obviously has no corn in it because corn is not keto. So don't worry about that. It is a keto cornbread. Okay, and we're gonna start this recipe from the cornbread already being done. So go ahead and make your cornbread and then come back over here and watch this video to finish up for the dressing recipe. Now, optimally, I would like you to make your cornbread, break it up into pieces once it's cooled, and then put it in a bowl, cover it with a dishcloth and let it sit overnight for about 12 hours if you can. Now, if you're last minute making this and you just don't have time for that step, you can do what I just did. You can break it up into pieces and then you can put it in the broiler in your oven on the top rack for a few minutes. Now keep an eye on it because you want it to just get toasted and golden. You don't want it to burn. Now, like they, they say a watch kettle, you know, never boils, but look, if you don't watch a broiler, it's gonna burn 100% of the time, every single time. So just sit and watch it and make sure that it doesn't burn. So that's a little cheap, but I'm telling you, it's much better if you wait and do it overnight, let it dry out that way. It just does much better. So do that if you can, but if you can't, like I said, this is a little cheat. Uh, since I'm pressed for time, I did it this way. <laughs> so now we're going to put it in a bowl and mix up all the dressing ingredients, which I will have listed all out. It's gonna be typed up on my blog, you can head over there, see the full recipe written out, print it off if you want to and go by that, but also watch the video so you can see exactly how I do things. And some of this stuff is very subjective, like some people like more onion, some people like less celery, some people don't like sage, so if that is a thing for you, then feel free to accommodate for your own tastes because that's totally fine. This is just how I do it. Okay, let's get to cooking. I'm having a glass of dry farm wine as I cook. I just like to drink wine while I cook. It's nice. So keep in mind, this is a quadrupled recipe. So this should feed, in theory, <laughs> about six to eight people. Um, but like I said, you can make it as big as you want to, double, triple, quadruple the recipe, it doesn't matter. The one on my blog is doubled. So follow that for if you have a small gathering. So we're just gonna dump in our celery and our onion and mix it up really well. We want it very well mixed, so no chunks. We want that cornbread all the way till it's, you can't even tell that it was a piece of cornbread. <laughs> Okay, now I'm gonna put my dried sage in. Now, sage is a very strong, strong herb, and some people don't like it. If you wanna leave it out, leave it out. If you wanna use less, use less. Um, my recipe calls for one and a half teaspoons, and I think that's a, that's a pretty good amount. However, I'm telling you if, you, if you have never used sage before, err on the side of caution, put less in, it's much better to put less than put too much because if you put too much, it's just going to ruin it.
Now you're going to want to stir this in really well because you want that seasoning evenly distributed. You don't want it all condensed in one area. So stir really, really well. You cannot over mix this. It just makes it better, honestly. So just keep mixing. Now we're going to add in our bone broth or chicken stock. Now you can make your own bone broth or you can buy like I did, Kettle and Fire. This is a really good one, honestly. It's, it's really good. So the key to the bone broth is that you're going to pour it in slowly. So this recipe calls for a cup. And depending on how much you're making, obviously, that's going to change. But as long as you pour it in a little at a time and then stir, it's going to be fine. Now you're just going to watch for texture. You want it to be nice and wet, but not super soggy because this is a different kind of cornbread, right? This is keto cornbread. So this cornbread isn't going to absorb the chicken broth like a traditional cornbread would. So you're not gonna need quite as much, but you do need, you do need, you know, you need enough. So eyeball it and when in doubt, add a little bit more because it's better to be a little bit more uh, wet than it is to be dry. Nobody wants dry dressing, okay? <laughs> Dr. Barry had to come give it the good old sniff test, and then he also wanted to taste it, so of course I obliged. He said it tasted good, I'll take his word for it. <laughs> now you can kind of see how the mixture's starting to stick together and that's what we're looking for so it needs to be kind of able to be molded and formed and that's exactly the texture that we're looking for for this type of dressing now i'm going to add in some ground pepper this is to taste so just put as much as you would like and do a little taste test and see you know if you need more if you need less this is totally just up to you. And you don't even have to put black pepper in there, but I tend to like black pepper in my dressing. We're just gonna mix that in a little bit. I'm gonna be honest, I could have put a little bit more bone broth in here. It could be a little soggier, but I didn't. You bet, um, like I said, always go a little heavy on the broth if you're in question. I really should have. <laughs> And also, I should have used a smaller dish, but you know, I haven't made this recipe in a year, so you know, cut me a break. Cut me some slack here. Um, I would use a square dish, maybe a 12 by 12. That would probably done better. Or 10 by 10, honestly, it could have been that small. But the point is here that you need to grease your pan, so grease your pan. Also, I wanna say that you could definitely put chopped meat in here if you wanna do chopped turkey or chopped chicken. I would do chicken thighs, honestly, boil them and then wait till the meat is just falling off the bone, chop it up. And I would do about a cup in this recipe. And I think that would be great. But for the time, I did not have time to do that. So there is no chicken in this recipe or turkey. Now I kind of like to spread it out really good and make sure that it's in the dish well and it's up against the sides and there's no gaps and holes just kind of smush it down in there. I just feel like it cooks better that way and then the crust is really nice on top when it's done. So now we're gonna put it in the oven on 350 and we're gonna cook it for about 30 to 45 minutes. And you're gonna check it at about the 30 minute mark and just see how it's going. For me, I needed to leave it in there just a smidge longer till it got this nice golden brown color on top. And then it was ready. Look how beautiful that is. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. And that's the finished product. Nice golden brown on top. It looks really good. Now, you're gonna wanna let this sit out and cool down for at least 30 minutes. 
and that's it. And like I said, I really should have used the smaller dish because this is really shallow, but it's fine. And it turned out great anyways. And I'm gonna show you kind of in the light here how the crust is on the side. It looks great. It's not dry, it's really moist, and it's just, it's a great side dish, especially at Thanksgiving because my grandma's dressing was one of my favorite dishes at Thanksgiving, and to be able to enjoy this still, even as a keto person, is just awesome. Pretty good. That'll do. <laughs> Come here. Come here. Okay, Pedrito. Let me taste this. See how it tastes here. If it, if it tastes like taste. If it tastes like taste. <laughs> mm, it's good. Yeah. That's good to me. <laughs> What are you doing? Checking out this dressing stuffing. He was supposed to wait. He already dug in. Mm. You like it? So good. So good. It's almost gone already. Mm. Who ate it all? Pedro? All of us. Mm. I'm going to have to make... I was working and you guys were feasting. Yeah, well. Mm. Yeah, that's a win. That's delicious. Doesn't yeah. even need gravy. Mm. Yeah, it's good stuff, huh? Yeah, thumbs up. <laughs> okay, friends, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope mm. you have. Mm. <laughs> I hope you guys have a very happy mm. Thanksgiving. And if you enjoyed the recipe, make sure and tag me on Instagram or Facebook if you make it. Let me know how you like it. Let me know how your family likes it. I like it. <laughs> uh, make sure to subscribe. More recipes to come. Just like this one. Maybe even better. Who knows? Alright guys. See you in the next video. Love you mean it.